Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SEO Frameworks, the podcast where we explore the building blocks of our winning SEO strategy. Whether you are an SEO professional, a digital marketer, or just looking to optimize your online business, this series is for you. Uh, I'm your host, Manuel Madedu, and this postcard is brought to you uh, by Homecrow. Well, thank you for being here. And today we will be discussing log file analysis. We've got uh, some nice guests here with us and I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, so yeah, maybe we start with Paul, uh, up to you to, to share a bit of a bio. Sure, yeah, I was just trying to unmute myself there. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm Tom, the SEO lead at pitchup.com. Uh, I've been working here for nearly a year now, uh, prior to working in-house at this pretty cool travel brand. Um, I spent seven, nearly eight years uh, working at the SEO agency Blue Array, uh, working with a wide number of different clients. Um, so small startups to large multinational uh, corporations. And I absolutely love anything technical SEO. Um, so th this is a discussion I've been wanting to have for a while. And that's why we're here. So <laughs> thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, Dan, I'll leave it to you to introduce yourself. Thanks, Manuel. Yeah, I'm Dan. I'm the SEO director at Journey Further. Uh, I've been uh, in SEO for uh, just over 12 years, um, mainly specializing in tech throughout that time. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to, to talk uh, tech detail because in general, nobody else wants to listen to me. So yeah, nice to have a chat with people who are, who are interested in talking about it. Perfect match. And then, yeah, I feel I leave it to you. And I hope you also like technical SEO, but I'll leave it to you too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it'd be a bit of a problem if I didn't. Um, so yeah, I'm Philip. Uh, I've worked in SEO for, I've had a look beforehand, over 13 years now, making me feel old. Uh, mostly an agency background, um, spent a good part of my career at Found, um, a small independent agency, and we worked across a huge variety of um, different size and types of websites, e-commerce, recruitment, uh, things like that. Uh, more recently, I've kind of evolved from kind of a pure tech specialist to kind of a management stream, um, kind of supervising strategy um, and running departments, and I currently head up the SEO department at Zenith. Wow. Okay, so you have, uh, you know, interesting profiles and you're, you're keen to discuss technical stuff and why we are here today. So let, let's make a very interesting conversation between us. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, the topic as I said is log file analysis, which is a very specific, very in-depth uh, topic for, for technical SEOs, for SEOs in general. So let, let's try to make it interesting and useful for, for the people listening. Um, I would start from maybe asking you guys, uh, you know, what, what is log file analysis and why, you know, we are, we are discussing this as a word stream when we do SEO. Um, I'll let you maybe Tom answer this. Sure, yeah, so from a high level, log file analysis is the, the process of reviewing log files. Um, so kind of analyzing them to understand uh, a little bit more about how Google mainly, um, but also other search engine bots are seeing websites um, to kind of help identify areas of interest, you know, to understand sections of the site that are more or less valuable than others. Um, that's it from a high level, um, I'll kind of, leave it to others to kind of add anything if they they want to there. Yeah, who wants to to maybe uh, expand on this? Like yeah, why I, then, yeah. I can jump in here. I think the key thing is that with the server access logs, essentially, presuming you validated the data, you have real world data and you're not working on assumptions. So any SEO tool you use will look at things from the front end. It will give you assumptions, but you don't know what Google is actually doing in the background. And that's the main reason why log files can be really useful as part of a campaign, because you can delve deep, see what Google's actually doing on your website rather than making assumptions. Yeah. So let's say it's our best weapon to, to try to understand, you know, under the, the hood, like what, what Google is actually doing and, and coring and hiding, because what you see in Search Console, for example, it's it's partial. Uh, it's not the full story. So it's, it's the best weapon we have to, to actually analyze and see data and then optimize. Uh, so speaking of which, Dan, so yes, top level, we, we understand now why it's important, but what we can get from it. So what, what are the, the actual things we can see and we can improve? Yeah, I think I think first and foremost, I think they're obviously useful, but I think they're primarily useful for, for large sites um, that um, <clears throat> potentially Google might have um, 
not have trouble crawling, but it might pro might not necessarily be prioritizing the things that you want it to. So it's about finding where Google's entering the site, what paths it's taking, are the bottlenecks somewhere that it's is it getting stuck in a section and not getting through to somewhere else, um, and and the frequency. Um, you know, we, we've recently had, uh, seen data, I think, um, from is it Johan Hulsen at SMX that said if you if a page isn't crawled in 128 days, Google de-indexes it. So if you've got a big site and you know that it's not, it's not that page isn't getting hit, you, you need to make sure it is. And we've uh, had a quick look for some of our clients and we can see actually that has been the case for them. Anything 129 days plus has, has got out of the index. So yeah, it's just, it's critical to not just for content refresh or, you know, we, we're talking about crawl budgets, but there, there's now an indexation issue related to the scale of your site, which log files would really tell you. Exactly. So, so as you said, guys, I think it's a, it's a common theme. So, log final analysis, uh, log final analysis is crucial. You know, the, the bigger the site is, the the, the more important it is to understand what Google is, is taking and how is crawling, how, how is perceiving our site. So, hence, you know, analyzing the log file to to understand, you know, crawling issues or, or patterns where uh, it might start the index pages or, or not really, you know, uh, reading the the content on on the site. So. Yeah, so say we, we understand now it's it's very important, but how to obtain it? Because you know, from from my experience, it's not easy to to just ask a dev and get the log file analysis because it can be a big file. Uh, so what can we do? So what's what's our best way to to obtain it? First of all, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, open question, but feel free to. <laughs> I guess yeah. I I think. I, if I go, the baby can edit this out, then Tom, you can add your bit on the end about that current stuff. But yeah, I think um, firstly, it, it's finding the right person. I think, you know, if you're dealing with a marketing manager, uh, a client side, and your agency side, and you're dealing with a client, um, they're highly unlikely going to have access to it. They might not even regularly speak to the person. Um, so I think it is it's building relationships, that, um, which is, you know, is always a thing like, you know, the, we say with SEOs and developers, it's finding who it is. Is it the head of IT? Is it the head of dev? Um, is there a DevOps team? Like, just get answers, asking those questions to find out who might have access to uh, the log files. Um, and then, as, as you said, Manuel, like, they can be huge. You know, depending, you're probably dealing with a big site. Um, you're not just getting Googlebot out there, you're getting every single hit on a page on the site. You know, you, you could be looking at millions and millions of rows. Um, so, making sure you've got a relevant but not too big a date range is, is a good thing so that you can actually you can actually open it or the, the, the tool that you're using can connect with it um, and sync it up to a crawl and understand understand where you are. So I think I think that's the, the first bit is finding who to talk to and figuring out what the date file is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just adding on to that, when you kind of come to the file sizes, you typically need to you won't, probably won't be able to chunk kind of add it to your Google Drive. You'll typically need to like log in via the FTP or something um, to be able to kind of download everything you need. And you kind of need to understand how the FTP server is set up as well. So typically it will just be kind of, if, if you're lucky, um, logs will be kind of separated out logically on that FTP server. They'll be under like subfolders or, you know, it will kind of make sense. But if you're unlucky, it will literally just be like day, month, year, date or whatever. And it won't be clear as to what server that's on. It could be on their staging server. It could be on their dev server. It could be on their dev staging. It could be on like a huge number of different servers. You need to kind of speak to somebody who a, it will preferably set it up so you can kind of understand what their reasoning and logic was behind their kind of naming conventions because you won't find anything that's kind of, uh, it won't be like a routine kind of setup. Um, so I guess it's kind of just understanding who who set it up and being able to understand the the structure of it all to be able to get the the stuff that you actually care about. Because um, as, as we kind of mentioned and alluded to previously, we, the main stuff we care about is, is bot bots right, is understanding how they're crawling the site and you kind of want to get like a filtered view so being able to get stuff from google bot or from bing bot or from a specific bot rather than everything because like you said if you get everything millions of hits per page particularly when you start talking about e-commerce sites you're going to end up with effectively terabytes of data that you're not going to be able to use yeah 
so yeah uh, so it's, it's it's clear can be challenging because log file you know can can be a big file but also the the, the amount of data we need to 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 go through analyze and also understand and you know uh, put, put together insights can be like a, a paramount task can be a big task so so phil what's the best way so so say we are lucky uh you know we we have our log file analysis we we have a, a simple enough structure uh, we, we can, uh, you know, spot check, but what's the best way to then prioritize and understand what we need to see analyze and then what's the best way to, to report and, you know, get, get to the insights? Yes, yeah, so the first thing you'd want to do is have a look at a very small sample of the logs to actually see what they contain, because in my experience, they're all set up slightly differently. They've got different columns of, of data and a lot of that data is probably going to be irrelevant to what you're looking at. Um, so the first thing I would always do is basically um, either in command line or if you're using the tool, filter out the data that you actually want to use. You'll have, you know, easily over a gigabyte of data for 24 hour period quite often. And you can filter that down to what you want, which might be maybe 10% of that or something. Um, and that instantly makes things a lot more manageable. Um, what I would typically do is open something initially in Excel just to see what it looks like. Uh, so you have to crop it so that it will fit within the row limit um, and then work out exactly what I want to pull from that data. Um, the first thing I would typically do after making the data smaller, though, is is bring new data back in. So I'll pull data in for other sources because the best insights and analysis and trends and recommendations are going to come from looking at other sources as well. So pulling in data like the search console impression data, data from analytics about how many people are actually visiting these pages, um, you know, any third party data you have as well. So if you've got like cruel data or in the number of um, in links pointing to particular URLs. So essentially building out, and I don't typically do this in a spreadsheet if I'm honest, build out columns with all of this additional data there. And that means that you can then start to segment that and actually pull in some real insights. So looking at the differences between, for example, where Googlebot is spending its time calling versus where users are. And that's where you really start to spot some initial trends that you can delve into and investigate further. Yeah, exactly. I remember from our first conversation, Tom, you, you mentioned something that made me laugh, but it's real. So, so the best way to, to treat all this huge amount of data is to have a data analyst. So that's the best way, you know, you, you, you need to have. So, so yes, if you are maybe a startup, you know, you, you can start from the basics and as Phil said, you know, try to, to from, from a smaller set, try to understand what's going on and identify tra the trends and teams. But then if you scale up and you are start working on big, big clients, big website, then you need to, to, to have like a dedicated person. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so let's say we, we have this dedicated person, but what's also the best way to, to represent, because we are discussing about a lot of data, a lot of bots, so we, we might need to, to spend time to, to understand what we want to, to get from this data. Uh, what, what's the best way to, to then, when we identify teams pattern, but what's the best way to then present to the business, which is also a challenge? How do we do we visualize, what, what do we use? Um, yeah, free, free to, to maybe, uh, yeah, Tom, maybe for you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, kind of going back a step to the uh, making sure you've got a data an a data analyst on board. Um, Philip, you obviously mentioned you're know, using a number of different tools, you know, command line and Excel and, you know, even if it's like text edit or something, just to kind of look at this data. But when you start getting into terabytes of data, you do need that kind of analyst on board who can kind of extract that stuff because you know we're seos right we're not data analysts yes we can do some data data analysis but their job is to do this kind of stuff so it's kind of making use of them where you can but when it comes to kind of presenting this to a wider uh wider team members particularly those that are perhaps from like a c-suite level you know if you're finding your kind of I don't know, there's certain sections of the site that aren't being crawled or you found like a bunch of issues within a log file analysis, whatever they might be, you want to just present the top level view when it comes to C-suite individuals, unless it's the CTO, in which case you can probably go into a little bit more technical detail. But if you're speaking to, you know, head of marketing or, or somebody, you don't want to be taking up too much of their time. Like as, as everybody is, everyone's busy, right? Particularly those people that are in this kind of C-suite position. And if you kind of present them with the full detailed log file analysis that perhaps we do internally or, you know, we just show it to like our kind of our colleagues and stuff, they're going to get bored like three slides in. Um, 
you know, you're kind of explaining why we're doing it, going into all the technical detail. They don't necessarily care about that. The stuff they care about is what's actionable and then what you're kind of doing to kind of fix it. So it's kind of splitting it into uh, relevant sections. It's like, you know, perhaps even starting with the actions. We've done a log file analysis. These are the things we want to be doing. And then kind of going into the impact of those if they've got time. If they don't, they can just leave and they've got the main kind of takeaways from that meeting straight away. Yeah, th these are very, uh, very important points. So, I mean, w as SEOs, as you said, we, we we tend to, as technical SEOs, we mm -hmm. tend to focus a lot on the details. So internally, we discuss a lot. We start from, from data, also because we are passionate. And w when we start to understand data, we want to share our findings. But actually, when we present back to the business, they don't care about bots. They don't care. So they, they need to understand what's the, the issue with the, for, for the business. And mm -hmm. Essentially, you need to translate mostly into money, revenue, and yeah. you know something that they can digest and take care of. So, yeah, yeah maybe done for you. So, what are the, the main things? You know, why? Again, going back to the first question. So, we have our log file analysis. We understand some part, and we understand what's wrong. But what's really important for the business to understand how to translate it to then what the business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Like you're just getting really excited that you spotted some weird glitch with the faceted nav or that like the, the parameters going spiraling off into the distance like Sorry. we we get that we we love that but yeah the, nobody else cares um i think i think when you're dealing with you often when you're dealing with something at this scale it is it is faceted nav related so it mean probably means you're dealing with an e-commerce site which usually means you've probably got quite a good handle on the revenue impact of something um and i think you know doing a few pictures recently on even even not so big what in the theoretically not such a big website but um you know there's hundreds of thousands of crawl not indexed urls in search console and you're like what on earth is going on here um and one of the key things is like google's not even hitting the current pages like so again this might might be what he's saying is like your site is um is just set up in a way that google can't understand it um and again it is if it's not um, if it's not surfacing the latest version of your website, um, the, the simple things of the load times are going to be slower because it's hitting a redirect every time it loads a page because Google's going you know you can you see that it's going going back to the original rather than rather than the latest version. Um, um, so there's uh, site speed um, it is the server the server load times that you can add on to that. There's a cost to that um, from a, an engineering perspective. Um, but if there's a you know a section within that where you can go look because of the way they set up this area is just it's not getting called like you might have latest offers you might have expanded your product catalog but google can't see this like um it is just not converting um i think often i know it's an seo podcast but often if you delve into the world of ppc right like i think there's um there's often a time where we've used with certain clients they like um what's the ppc cost of the lost traffic so how much would it cost to buy back this traffic? And that does work quite well because you're like, oh, actually, it's going to cost me sort of 50 grand to pay for it. Well, maybe we'll put some dead time into fixing the issue. So I think I think being able to, and often you'll find that if you are maybe dealing with a CMO, you do tend to find they've probably come more from a paid media background. So they get that. So again, it's, yeah. as Tom said, it's putting it in their language. Exactly. And you raise a good point because, I mean, yes, this is a technical SEO podcast. We are focusing on, uh, you know, technical aspect of SEO. We are SEOs, but, you know, more and more, we, we should have like a more of an analytic approach. This is in, in our day-to-day -day job because, you know, search engines are more powerful. We need to connect the dots, but also, and especially when you're having conversation with, yeah, C-suites or, you know, uh, senior stakeholders, you, you need to translate all of this to, to the broader perspective. So what, what SEO is impacting? What's the correlation? You know, uh, you as a business, what you're losing. So it's really important. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I have one final question for, for all of you and uh, we can go one by one or feel free to discuss, but Phil, maybe starting from you. So so say, okay, we have our log file analysis. We identify the partners. We, we, we got excited. We share, you know, with the devs internally, our findings. Uh, we, we are pretty sure we've got some big issues uh, that, that the business should rectify or fix, but they don't really understand. So what's the best way to, to you know, get the message through 
when we we've done all the analysis, we prioritize all the action, but what's the best way to convince and show, you know, actually you need to fix? Uh, I would say three things. Um, so the first one is, it's very important how you present the information to different stakeholders as we were touching on earlier. So if you're talking to someone like a CMO, I would probably go in with a very short PowerPoint deck with some visuals, probably pie charts or something in this case, showing this is what Google's calling. This is where your users are going. You know, this is the mismatch. Um, so that's the first step. So make sure you don't go into technical uh, to non-technical stakeholders. Uh, second one, I'd always use a case study if we've got a case study that we've either ideally done ourselves or found online somewhere showing where a website has had a similar issue. So maybe you've got a spider trap or your crawl budget's just kind of mismatched in terms of what actually is important on your website. Um, and if you can quantify the value that that drove for another business, um, that can always help because as we know with SEOs, anything kind of forecasting is always a bit kind of finger in the air, even if there is good data behind it. Um, and then the third point in terms of implementation, um, and, and this is broader than just log file analysis, but you know, it, it's challenging to get stuff implemented sometimes. So what I always say is, is pick where you can win. So even if there's, you know, even if you can only change title tags on, you know, in the CMS, get something done where you can say, we did this, this was the impact, you know, get that in front of the senior stakeholders there. And then it's much more likely that they can be your internal advocate within the client or within the business to kind of help you get buy-in from the product team or the developers when you are asking them to, to look at these other areas. You just need some proof, basically, that, that what you're saying is, you know, will help in the end. Exactly. I think it's very important to, to build a trust first, you know, find the best way to, to build that trust. And then the, it would be easier for them to, to hear you and, and, and follow your recommendations. Uh, but yeah, sorry guys, I'll leave it to you. <laughs> so Tom, uh, so again, you know, what was the best way to, to prioritize or convince the business that actually we need to fix stuff? I guess it's to understand what the business's uh, kind of goals and what they're currently aiming to do. Um, you know, if, if they're aiming to expand within certain regions or they're aiming to, I don't know, add a million new facets to the site, for instance, and you can demonstrate that Google isn't even crawling the ones you've got. It's kind of tying in, it's, it's kind of like tying the findings back to a business case, um, back to where they, the, the, the business is currently heading. It's understanding what the priorities are internally. And then, you know, I guess we mentioned this, um, I think in our initial chat was just understanding what developers kind of uh, roadmaps look like. And being able to work out, okay, I've got this specific recommendation. Maybe I can kind of fix this alongside this kind of thing that they're working on as well. So you can kind of merge them together and understanding like the kind of ticketing systems. Um, I think that will go a long way to, to getting stuff getting stuff done effectively. Yeah, I think all in all is like making more relevant to, to mm. the business and to the different stakeholders because... Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's a fun fact, but usually, you know, SEOs clash with devs and, uh, you know, we have these these love and hate relationship, but essentially it's, it's making them your your, your friend. Mm -hmm. So try to, to follow what they're implementing because, I mean, they're, they're colleagues at the end of the day. We need to work with them. They're, they're busy. They've got their Thai backlog. So we need to follow what they're doing and try to fit in uh, if you're discussing with the devs. But this is also... Uh, the same where we're having discussion with the marketing team with all the stakeholders really so really try to make relevant what we are proposing to to all the other teams are doing um, and also the business goals as you said um yeah dan uh do you have anything to add about this like how to yeah yeah i think i just wanted to pick like pick up on something like that phil said again like that that trust case and i think testing something that is is Sometimes not a dirty word for SEOs, but sometimes we we tend to just try and get things, just get everything fixed. Now, is it if it's a faceted nav, is it is it something that can be compartmentalized? Is there a specific section where you can go in and go, look, can we just try on these little bits? It reduces the scale of the ticket down to from two weeks to half a day, um, and then we can create a proof case from this part of the section to go, look, we've done this. This is X amount. How much more money it it take? Now we need X amount more time to apply this across the rest of the site, and I think I think that's that's also it's doing both things like both Phil said talking to the business, but what Tom said is talking to the devs. It's not going rebuild the entire facet of nav, which is a massive job. You know, it, to be honest, it, uh, 
working on a pitch this week. It is the recommendation I've come to. I will actually like get rid of a lot of leaks. It's like you need to start again. Um, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it just happens. Um, but it, but it is that if you can build it out and provide that use case and that proof proof of uh, proof of concept, I think is a massive thing. Um, and it reduces the devs time and it and it means that you've got something that you've got that case study that you've done to go and you can sell that into the business. Yeah, it's also, as we said, it's also about trust because mm -hmm. if you already built that trust, I mean, they're, they're more keen to listen to you, uh, even though if they need to go against, you know, their plans because you've got that authority you gained about saying, you know, guys, you, you're going in the wrong direction. So, I mean, but, yeah. but that will cost time, that will cost money to them. So really, you need, you, you need to show numbers and... How many how many devs do you come across who don't trust SEOs because somebody told them something and it didn't work, right? Or didn't yeah. make a difference, or work didn't really know. Like I always sit by site speeds when where you find that a lot is where an SEO's made it like a site speed page speed insights recommendation, which doesn't really work in the real world and it's made no difference to the performance of the site. And like, well, what was the point of that? You've just spent a week on that ticket. So is that it's thinking about, you know, their time is just as valuable as your time and yeah, exactly. making sure that they're exactly. working on the right stuff. Yeah. So yeah, thank you guys. I think that that's it for today. I feel we we had a very useful, interesting conversation. We we can expand a lot more. As you know, it's complex. You know, uh, it touches a lot of things. So we 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 can keep discussing for hours, maybe in next episodes. But what we discussed today, I think it's been good in terms of you know providing a top of a view of why it's useful and direction about how to to face some of the the common conversations um so yeah if you want to to find more i mean feel free to to reach out to to these guys here we will share the details so you you can reach out and ask more questions to, to the guys or to me but uh yeah it's all for today and we hope you enjoyed this episode of our podcast and before signing off again i want to say thank you for all of you uh for joining this uh nice episode about log file analysis and the topic was a bit tricky we we tried to make it make it <laughs> a bit bit lighter as a conversation i think it worked out um but yeah keep following us and join us again for the next episode of the seo frameworks and stay tuned thank you guys for being here today thank you yes thank you thank you for having us thank you